big news day with Mueller's indictments, but we still don't know if there was collusion between Donald Trump and the Kremlin. We do know a former Trump advisor lied about his contacts with Russia, and Trump's press secretary downplayed that role today. Can you just explain what George Papadopoulos' role with the campaign was? It was uh, extremely limited. It was a volunteer position. And again, uh, no activity was ever done in an official capacity uh, on behalf of the campaign in that regard. Uh, that claim is false. Papadopoulos just admitted some of the activity, including not only the controversial Russia contacts. The public record also shows him the center of this huddle during a campaign event with Donald Trump literally a few chairs down. Paul Manafort's lawyer began his defense, though, today on the courthouse steps. There is no evidence that Mr. Manafort or the Trump campaign colluded with the Russian government. The claim that maintaining offshore accounts to bring all your funds into the United States as a scheme to conceal from the United States government is ridiculous. I'm joined by Betsy Woodruff, a political reporter for The Daily Beast, who's been breaking her share of stories here, and Brian Weiss, a criminal defense attorney who represented former House Majority Leader Tom DeLay in a conspiracy and money laundering criminal defense appeal. Uh, go to you, Brian. What is the best defense here uh, for at least these two indicted individuals from the Trump orbit today? Ari, I hope you guys don't cancel my car service for saying this, but I spent lunch going through these 31 pages, and it's difficult to come up with what passes for credible defense. This is not mm. a murder case where self-defense is an issue, a theft case where consent or a securities fraud case involving the statute of limitations. This is a case that turns on a money trail and a paper trail. And this is not a situation where a great lawyer can break down a lying cop or a thieving snitch. In 38 years of practice, I've never seen any lawyer be able to break down an email or a bank record right, you're saying, and get them to confess that they've got it wrong. You're saying this is a paper case, not a people case. Uh, and while you can find doubt in people and you can undermine them before a jury, when the paper's strong, that's much harder. Uh, I guess I got to ask you the, the question then, do you think uh, this is an even harder defense than that for Tom DeLay? You know, in DeLay, Ari, we had a situation where basically nobody disagreed as to what Tom did. The question was whether or not the prosecution overreached and created a crime out of a series of innocent acts. So at the end of the day, what the Court of Appeals found in acquitting Tom is that assuming everything that the prosecution said was true, it didn't constitute criminal conduct. That is not this case. And if there's such a thing as a term paper that feels like an A in college, this is an indictment that feels like a conviction, Ari. It does feel like a conviction, which is striking coming from you, although I have to note for the record, Betsy, uh, the good lawyer that Brian is, he did not exactly answer the question, did not want to compare his <laughs> former client directly. Uh, but, Betsy, what are we hearing on the larger defense out of the, the Trump world? I, the folks that I've spoken to today who are in that space have taken a fairly uh, bullish tone when it comes to talking about these issues. And I think one thing that's important to remember here is that given that Manafort has been indicted under FARA, which is the law that bars people from secretly lobbying for a foreign government in the United States, that's something that's really new. We haven't had a serious FARA indictment, I believe, in decades. So one thing that we've already heard from Manafort's defense team that we're likely to hear going forward is that this is a novel interpretation of the way that the Ferris statute works and that it's politically motivated. That's a case that we can expect Manafort's defense team to make. My guess is that the legal process here is going to be quite long, quite drawn out. It wouldn't be surprising to me if, uh, right. if there are also some criticisms of the way that the Mueller probe has functioned, potentially even charges of prosecutorial misconduct from the defense. Right. Look, attacking, they know they're in a quarter, the they know it's going to be be tough. Uh, Brian, can I ask you a silly question? Absolutely, Ari. <laughs> Would it help Paul Man Manafort in court uh, to say, regardless of what he's accused of, he doesn't like Hillary Clinton or she's done bad things? Is that something that would get him off? Well, it depends. If they, if they change venue to the Hamptons, if they change venue to the coal country of Pennsylvania, your guess is as good as mine. But I noticed in the clip that you played before we came on, of Manafort's lawyer on the courthouse steps. Yeah, a couple of really good sound bites, but he addressed probably one half of 1% of the allegations in this 31 page indictment. He's going to have to do better than ridiculous by way of mounting a credible defense to these in in allegations. All right. right, and tweeting about Clinton may be a political strategy. It's not something that tends to move the, the judges running 
running the traps or the jurors making the, the final call if it gets to that point. Brian Weiss and Betsy Woodruff on a busy news day. Thank you so much. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.